Hello, 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 guys. Welcome to Workouts for Women Men Live. Hello, Derek. Hello, hello, hello. Patrick, I am awesome. How are you doing? Good to have you here, sir. I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. Anything to deal with uh, fitness. Here to answer any questions that you might have. So, Derek, you're muted, all right? So, nobody can see your post. If you guys have any fitness questions, I'm here to answer them for you. So glad you are here. Tell me where you're watching me from. Say hello, hello, hello. That's our Workouts for Older Men live greeting. Anything I may have posted... Or on the week, you have any follow-up questions? Maybe I, I linked you to a video, something to do with training or nutrition, and you have some follow-up questions. You want need some clarification? I'd be more than happy to talk about that with you. I always want to make time. As you see, I I post all throughout the day, all throughout the week, uh, but I do want to follow up. Um, I know that there's so much fitness information out there. It seems conflicting. It seems confusing. It seems. Uh, doesn't make any sense. Uh, a lot of times it's uh, maybe how you are interpreting what is said from your vantage point, from your experience. You're probably doing already a great job, but you want to get to that higher level. All right. A lot of times it, it's in the translation, what you think it means versus, well, definitely with what I'm, with what I'm saying. It's not an easy thing. I mean, it seems so simple just to lift weights, <laughs> right? Just to lift weights. And, uh, eat right. I guess it could be simple, but actually, you know, sometimes the follow through uh, isn't quite um, where you want it or you don't feel quite certain enough. And that's where, you know, having conversations like this um, may be able to help you. Patrick still nursing my shoulder back to health. Cannot wait to get it back into weight training. I'm missing it a lot. Well, good luck with that. Good luck with that. Hermondo, hey Skip, just wanted to say I'm no older man, but I've been following your career for 20 years. You've been very inspiring to me. Uh, and I have made a lot of progress in my life thanks to it. I just want to say thank you. Well, thank you for those kind words. Uh, uh, Hernando, um, and I, I want to think about it, how many live videos that I've done, how many articles and everything that I post, how many live videos, how many recorded videos. I mean, the thousands and thousands of hours that I probably spent in these 33 years. I mean, since the Internet was invented, um, it's good to hear that uh, you have found value. Let me know if there's any way that I can help you. Yeah, you know what? There, there's my cell phone number. Text me if you have any questions uh, or if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching. All right, that's uh, my personal line. All right. Uh, what I'll have you do a lot of times is I'll link you to a questionnaire. Um, then, you know, you can really think out, you know, where you are, where you want to go. Communicate that to me um, on this questionnaire. Might even have you send me a picture because a picture. It truly, you know, the saying it. Um, it's worth a thousand words. I can really tell uh, when I see someone's uh, physique, you know, uh, how many years they've been training, uh, the intensity in which they're training um, over time, you know, the density in their muscles, certain look, but also um, how you've been eating, right? It, you know, from, you know, doing this for 33 years, helping out so many, so many people, uh, that picture. So when we talk, 
I can cut right to it and maybe see some distinctions of uh, what you need to do to get to your higher level that you probably can't see. Good evening, Roderick. Great to have you here. Sir, where are you from, Roderick? And how long have you been uh, following my Facebook page, uh, uh, my videos? I'm curious, always curious. Hello, Carlos. Great to have you here, sir. You guys have any questions? It's always like one question is uh, something that can really benefit everybody, right? So feel free to ask any questions. You know, it doesn't even need to be about fitness, anything about our journey to life being a little bit older. A couple years from Virginia. Nice. Great to have you here, Roderick. Thanks for uh, being here, but also uh, commenting. I appreciate that. Steven, hello from North Carolina. Just started following you. Nice. What did, what did I do? Just pop up on your feed one day, Steven? Workouts for older men or were you looking for something and I popped up? I'm always curious about that. Maybe one of those reels popped up. But again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, ask me the right, right now and... Uh, like I said, a lot of people could benefit. I'm sure they have the same question. If you, I, I have a lot of men that, you know, they're on social media and they don't comment. And it's really like a burner account, you know, uh, they stay low profile. If that's you and you want to contact me, there's my phone number right there. You can text me. You can set up some time to talk. So Carlos, how long have you been trained? Sergio. From Connecticut. Great to have you here, sir. You did, and being 57, I will learn from your wisdom. Well, thank you. Um, should we lose fat before we start to build muscle? No, actually, you can do them both at the same time. You know, your weight training, your overload training, uh, you know, that's what builds muscle. That's what initiates the process, you know, that five more pounds, one more rep, kind of pushing yourself to get a little stronger, using good form, feeling execution. Uh, that's what breaks down the muscle. And then as it recovers, it grows with enough stimulation. All right. Uh, losing fat, primarily done through your diet. Um, you know, your, your weight training doesn't help you lose body fat. Now, you know, in this fitness world where, you know, everybody gets, you know, for all, you know, so they'll say, well, you know, having more muscle uh, helps you uh, lose body fat. Well, even though that may be true in what I say in a Petri dish, I mean, how much muscle mass are you going to really gain, especially at this age? And how much muscle do you have to gain to have an impact on your metabolism? Where it's right now, right here, right now, it's learning how to optimize your nutritional habits right now. That's how you lose body fat, right? So your weight training... It doesn't have a part of, you know, this. Um, yeah, it doesn't have a part of you losing fat. They're two separate things, right? So uh, lift those weights, build that muscle, right? Uh, definitely you want to uh, preserve as much muscle as you can with overload weight training. We're going to need that as we age even more, right? And that has nothing to do with body fat. So yes, you can do them both at the same time. Just remember your weight training does not help you lose body fat. That's done through your diet. Well, thank you, Denise. What diet are you on? Um, I just have a, a balanced diet. I, I know how many calories that I need to eat. Um, you know, about 30 to 40% of it is protein, 30 to 40% is carbohydrates. And yes, I do eat carbohydrates and 20 to 30% is fat. But it's it's sticking to that, that caloric total and being consistent with it. That's where all the magic happens. There aren't magic foods that get you leaner faster, even though you may have gone on a tuna fish diet in the past and you were really strict with your diet and you got really lean. You may uh, attribute that to the tuna fish, right? But if you, uh, you know, you keep your uh, macronutrients in a certain ratio, it doesn't have to be specific. You hit your calories, you knew how many calories you're eating. Uh, you found that right amount and you're very consistent with it. Um, it didn't matter if it was tuna. It doesn't matter if it's chicken. It doesn't matter if it's beef. It 
it doesn't matter if it's even dark meat chicken if you keep them uh, in their percentages. So there's no special foods. And I just keep those parameters, right? Uh, how many sets do you recommend for each body part uh, being trained? Now, that question, I mean, I give, uh, like just say, I recommend just say 10 sets. Well, someone will say, that's not enough. It's not enough. I need 20 sets. Well, if you need 20 sets and you pace yourself through 20 sets, you might train hard. You may uh, pick what you think is a uh, challenging weight. Uh, but you're going to pace yourself to get through all 20 sets, whether you realize it or not. What if uh, you were to take a leap of faith and uh, believed that you can get just as much productivity with only 10 sets for that body part? Now, you can't train with a 20 set mentality. I mean, you're going to have to push yourself harder. You're going to have to you know, lift more weight, but it is possible. So because of the wide range and approach and understanding and in intensity and in mind muscle connection, you know, you can give somebody uh, a range. Uh, but really, uh, if, you, if you taught a man how to train, he could probably get it done in half the sets of somebody else who kind of just checks off the box, right? So you can never really answer that question. I think it's incomplete to say 10 sets because most people say, that's not enough. You've been doing, you're, you've been doing this for 33 years. You were a 60, six time national champion, drug free bodybuilder. I, I can't do that few sets. Well, um, if you believe that to be true, if you think that I can because of my age and not the way that I train and how I approach it, then you should stick to the, your 20 sets, whatever you believe to be true. It isn't like if you did 20 and you paced yourself through all 20 sets for body part, it isn't like you're going to be over training and go backwards. It's just going to take you 20 sets where somebody else who knew what they were doing can do in 10 sets. But you both are going to, uh, you're both going to get the results, but it's, you're going to apply it differently. And that's going to be the common factor. There are many ways to get there, but it is, uh, you know, it, 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 I can't, you know, I can't teach you what intensity is. I got to instruct you, give you markers on what to feel. You got to do it. You got to give it a, as I tell my kids, a 15 out of 10 effort, not a six or seven out of 10, not partially believing it, a 15 out of 10 effort to see the power and then go from there. Um, I am still at 2000 calories a day seems to be maintaining my weight, uh, with that number. Don't know if it's good or bad. I weigh 162 pounds now, you know, you know, I can take men on a coaching plan, right? Okay. I can. So these are men who are serious, right? They want this badly, so badly that they will actually hire me for a coach. Okay. So even when they hire me as a coach and I say the same things over and over again, we as human beings uh, still make the same mistakes. All right. So let me tell you this. Don't worry about weight on the scale. You probably heard of that, but you don't think it applies to me. It's not a factor in what you're doing. It's not. Because when you get lean in there, you have the stubborn fat. You know, I, I, I have a gentleman, you know, who I uh, took pictures every week. He, he was with me for 14 weeks at a big belly. And this is just an example. I'm sure you're down to the stubborn fat, right? And um, And by his own you know, evaluation of his effort, of everything he was outlined to do. Uh, he gave it what he would say a seven out of 10 effort. It was right after Thanksgiving. So he had a whole Christmas holidays, a lot of uh, time at work and focus on work, stress at work. Right. And, you know, I think he got his work out in, but, but by his estimation of all the things he needs to do with the training meeting, he gave himself a seven out of 10. All right. So it's 14 weeks. He knew he didn't really, give that effort. But what I have men do is take pictures every single week, like the day we talk for our one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? I have the same lighting, same clothes, same distance from the mirror. I don't have them involve someone to take a picture for them to complicate. You can just take a selfie, but it has to be the same angle, right? Same distance from the mirror, same clothes, same lighting, same time of day on that same day, right? So that later on, 14 weeks later, and every week in between, I can make a direct comparison because when, especially when you're trying to lose uh, the stubborn fat, 
you know, you're not going to see the improvement. You're just not. It happens too gradually, especially when you do it in a sustainable manner, right? Or you have stubborn fat. So those pictures are invaluable, you know, in the process, you know, but he put in that effort, you know, I was there to reassure him, keep him on track, you know, keep him focused. But on week 14, I, I did a side-by-side -side comparison of week one through week 14. And it was massive. The difference was massive, but it was so gradual, he didn't see it. If you don't appreciate your progress and you can't see it, right? Yeah, you want to try different things or you'll, you know, uh, you'll think it's your training and go on the, off that direction. You'll change your diet. You'll give up whatever if you can't see your progress. You know, when you do this in a sustainable manner, it's not going to happen so dramatic. And weight on the scale is not even a factor, especially when you get to the, the stubborn body fat, right? So, you know, but anyway, so after 14 weeks, I did the pictures and like I said, his belly was half of it was gone. Again, 14 weeks, given a seven out of 10 effort. You know that on the scale, he was only one pound down. And there's a lot of reasons for that, right? And like I'm saying, and, you know, I'm giving this information away for free. So theoretically, I'm just dealt with people and same thing with me. If I don't pay for it, I'm really not paying attention. I'm gone. Well, hmm, I've heard differently, you know, <laughs> do this with my wife. <laughs> you know, I've trained a dog. I've, I've gone through 11 years of training a dog. And uh, I say, look, this is the way you do it. I've read books. I have practical experience. And uh, she'll reference, you know, some TikTok video, right? Okay. So I know you've heard different things than what I'm saying. You've heard everything. That's part of the challenge, right? So, uh, but uh, even with the people who are the most committed, they're just tied into weight. I, I can tell them every single week, don't worry about the weight. I have them text me their weight every morning and night. So they're dragged through the process of doing everything right and the weight not participating. All right. So when you evaluate whether something's working and I, you can't, Put weight on the scale. All right. So, you know, because, uh, you know, you that weight uh, just depends on so many different things, how much your muscles are volumized at particularly. There's so many different factors. But, you know, you are consistent and you gradually lose body fat. And if you do it in a sustainable manner, it's not hard. You didn't go on some sprint. You didn't put in some superhuman effort. And then... You know, you're going to have to stop one day to live a normal life. You did it in a sustainable manner. The changes are going to be gradual. And it's not going to, the scale isn't going to participate. So if you're constantly re referring to the scale as part of the equation, whether it should go forward, if it's working, it's just going to throw you off. All right. Hello, 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 Robin. Great to have you here, sir. Can you be specific on your daily meals? Let's see here. Let me... Oh, let me just send you to a link. And I... So skiplacore.com French slash diet. But let me just tell you, as I send you here, if you're looking for specific foods, then you're, you're going to be thrown off. You're going to believe that specific foods are the key. You know what I mean? You know, this is an interesting story. I'm always, uh, I'm always looking for connection because I really believe in life, all areas of life, not in fitness. I really believe that there are certain organizing principles that you can master anything. You know, like being persistent, like giving that 15 out of 10 effort. It's not, not quitting, you know, after you didn't find the perfect action. It's, it's getting knocked down nine times and getting up 10. And then hurrying up and do it. Not like, you know, you try a certain diet, doesn't work. And then three months later, you make an adjustment. And then six months later, it's not quick enough a time. You take action. Take action quickly. You, you're persistent. You make sure a strategy isn't going to work if you don't give a 15 out of 10 effort. You could be doing everything right. So 
I, I really think now whether we're all wired differently. I mean, there's a lot of men who are watching me right now who in their mind are convinced that they want to master their fitness for whatever reasons, health, longevity, they're sick and tired of the way they look, who are really great at what they do with their business. Sometimes we just get wired to focus in and, and use our resourcefulness and our determination and our resilience on certain things. And it could be business or something like that, our family. And we're just not applying that same uh, mental power onto fitness, even though we think we are. All right. You know, um, and, and so, you know, I'm always looking for these distinctions because it, it sees it pop up again and again. I do a lot of life coaching which, you know, to a lot of men who are successful, that seems kind of odd. But it, I don't care how successful you are. Uh, there are areas of your life that because of your success and your focus in one area, you're going to leave holes. And I'm not saying those other areas like your relationships, how you raise your children or your health. I'm not saying it's terrible. But usually, like, if you're really good at something, you put in a, a, a lot of focus there. And it's just not as much. And you, you're just missing certain distinctions. So I'm always looking uh, uh, for, uh, you know, these certain patterns. So uh, and it, it, they crop up in all areas of life. So, you know, you might see I'm very active in uh, I'm making my kids uh, great athletes. Right. But it's not about, you know, being the best athlete. It's, it's, it's personal development. So for kids, and by the way, at six years old, I have a nine and a half year old and an eight year old. All right. And. Uh, you know, it's about personal development because in sports, not only do you have a game once or twice getting uh, a week, you're tested. You're tested to see if you're a good listener, uh, if you understand the concepts, right? Like in life, if you teach, you know, your kids you know, how to get along with other people, I mean, how many times are they going to really have a conflict with uh, their classmates or friends? What, once every three months, once a year? Right, where sports, you are tested one and twice a week. If you're listening, if you're paying attention, if you're disciplined, if you're working hard, if you're being persistent, if you're being resourceful, if you have the will to win, if you can bounce back. All right. So, you know, me, I, if you don't know much about me, I'm, I, it's been, I, I trained with Tony Robbins, uh, for, you know, thousands of hours and thousands of dollars, right? Uh, learning that process, uh, right? Uh, coaching other men, all right? Being in his coaching program, like it was less than a hundred of us in a room for seven days where he taught us our skills way back when, I don't know, 25 years ago in San Diego or something like that, right? So I'm really into personal development and with kids raising them for those reasons. Sports, they do well in sports, but it's really about their own personal development. And, you know, you don't even need to be Tony Robbins trained. A lot of the parents love their kids and they use sports for the same reason. So uh, that's not unique. If, if, and by the way, a little plug here. If, if this sounds interesting to you, uh, maybe you, you respect what I've done as a bodybuilder and you have um, kids um, that are younger or maybe grandkids you think might benefit. Um I'm going to send you to a Facebook page. And then that Facebook page will also uh, take you to my Coach Your Kids Right website. And that's at, uh, you know, coachyourkidsright.com. But you can go over to this Facebook page while you're here and like this page. All right, head over there, right? So... Thanos basketball, right? Okay. All right. So, so anyway, what, what, what I do with my kids, and again, if you don't play softball or baseball, this may not mean that much to you, but you know, there's certain things that if you do, <laughs> you'll stand out. All right. In addition to throwing the ball and hitting the ball, getting a hit, throwing the person out, pitching or whatever, but there's, there's all these details that they're actually really simple, but they're rare. So if at eight, nine years old, nine and a half years old or eight, if I can get them to do those things, you know, not only will we give them confidence, help them stand out, right? Uh, right. And so like one thing is uh, getting down when you're in the field, you know, 
at this age, you know, especially at eight years old, right? They're, they're you know, just getting them to pay attention. They're in the outfield, looking everywhere, not even really paying attention. And if they are, they're just kind of standing straight up and watching. So I teach my kids to get down. Like if you look at a major league third baseman or any infielder, right? Uh, they're 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 down with their glove on the ground, ready, you know, for the ball to be hit to them, right? So I teach my kids at eight and nine and a half years old to do that. Every pitch, every pitch. Now, so you know, uh, so they're doing it right, uh, but they don't understand it, it fully. So they're kind of bending down. They're down. They understand the general concept. Uh, but they got their hands, <laughs> their their elbow, their elbows on their knees, kind of bracing them up, and it's almost like, you know, well, Daddy, I'm down. Everybody else isn't even paying attention. I am doing what you say, but that isn't what I said. I said you put your butt down. You got to brace yourself. You got to have strong legs to put your your glove on the ground. It's not the same. As a matter of fact, you almost look lazy if you're using your knees to prop yourself up. All right. <laughs> all right. So it may look the same, but it's, it's not the same at all. In addition to that, I tell them to uh, what they call a creep. You know, I call it a bunny hop, but you get down and after every pitch, you go a little bit forward. Like you get a, like, a, 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 um, like a bounce off start every single time. Now, I know the other kids aren't even paying attention. They're like looking around and you got this eight year old or whatever on the ground deep and then taking a creep after every pitch everyone not when you feel like it, not when you're tired everyone you know right and so like I don't expect them you know to get this and you know if they looked around amongst their peers and everybody was doing it they would probably uh, get that sooner and I've got a the reason why I'm telling this story it has everything to do with your fitness too and getting the information that you need all right so you know uh so I've been really talking about since, you know, the, the season and before, you know, how you get in position, tell them after the game, maybe even during the game to get down, get down, right? Not expecting them to get it right the first, second, even the 20th time consistently. But I know I have to be persistent because once they feel it and once they see it, especially if they get rewarded by someone other than me to do it, right? And so, so that's phase one. The other one is the kickoff. You know, the little creep of every pitch. Now, can you imagine where nobody's paying attention? You got some little kid. That's not hard to learn. Someone just got to teach them. Kids aren't lazy. You just need to teach them and you need to follow through and prepare, be prepared to tell them a hundred times. But once they get it, they'll get it. All right. So with my daughter, just uh, earlier in the week, I mean, she got it. You know, uh, she was doing it pretty consistently, pretty well. All right. Um, I do these little commitment cards like so before the game they make certain goals and you know there's certain aspects that I pick up I, I, I have them focus on and that was one even though they're already kind of do it they understand the concept right and so uh, my daughter had uh, tryouts now she's if this is a 9 10 there's even some 11 year olds in this league so she's in the younger part and they were trying out for all stars. Um, so she's on the, the young side, uh, but she caught, so they were, they have a, a, you know, the top team, which they call B, you know, and then the, then the second team is C. So they had, I think 40 girls trying out for 24 positions. All right. So, you know, um, so she got called back for a second look. They had like, I don't know, nine or 10, um, of the players for the top team, the the B team that they call it. And they, out of the 40 girls, they had nine or 10 already selected the best girls. And again, my daughter's on the younger side of the, you know, uh, and they, they invited her back. All right. And uh, so I don't know, they had about 10 girls going for those, you know, two or three spots. Okay. Well, again, you know, to get it right, I mean, to make that impression, it's more than hitting. You got to have attitude. You got to have energy, and all these things that I teach them through sports, all the intangibles, not just hitting the ball and, and throwing the ball. Well, anyway, uh, and again, I didn't want to coach from the sideline because I hopefully I've, I've done my coaching. So she's there. She's doing. She's doing a great job. 
out there. And she's down in position. And I'm looking at her, I'm thinking, she's not doing a little creep. You know what I mean? Even though she did it at the game. And I, it was, it's on her wrist on the commitment card. And we talked about that specific. Hey, she's not leaning on her elbows. She's getting down. Right? Now, she wasn't the only one getting down. It wasn't like eight-year-old baseball where everybody, these are all stars. Right? And you're the best players in the league. And so, like, she had an opportunity. All the coaches were bunched up, and she was playing second base while they were having batting practice. And she got down, which I know it looked good. Right? But that's not... That's not the same as what I said. All right. So practice went on for about a half hour or so. And finally, the coach, you know, yelled at all the girls. And now, again, these are all stars trying for the team. Uh, she, they, she, uh, the coach yelled out, hey, you girls, look, get down and creep. I don't see one of you getting down and creep, creeping. You know? You know, and I, I told my daughters that when you follow specifically, it's not the same. It seems the same. From your vantage point, it seems like I'm do doing what you said. It isn't what I said. I guess it's close. It's better than most. But so you got to do it exactly, not just your perception of you're doing it all. Okay. I mean, it was this. She made, the, by the way, going to the end, she made the team, right? <laughs> all right. But she was this close if she would have understood and followed the instructions and its importance. She was this close for that coach yelling, hey, everybody, you're not getting down and creeping. The only one that's doing it is Brooklyn here. This close to being that standout. So what's my point of this big, long story about girls softball at a nine-year-old? You guys think you are doing, your, you know, the training and you're working out and you're eating. You're just missing key things. It's not the same. It seems the same. I understand it's the same, right? But if you're frustrated, you can't get under the 22% body fat, right? It's not because of your age. It's not because of your metabolism. It's not because you're carb sensitive. There's something that you don't understand. You think you're doing it. And because you think you're doing it, you're never going to change. You're never going to change. You're going to go your whole lifetime, 63, uh, 73, and you're never going to crack it because you think you are understanding and it's something like that. It isn't the same when you get down and you're using your knees to hold you up. I don't care if you're better than other men your age. That's not going to take you to where you, you want to go. You don't have a the full understanding. And it's not because there's confusing information and everybody's wrong in this and that. No, you don't understand. I could, I could, I could talk on here for 10 hours every single day answering your specific question, but it's left up to your interpretation of what I'm saying. She did not have my interpretation. Uh, it's not the same. It's better than not standing up, paying attention. Hell, you're going to the gym and you're watching what you eat, right? But you're not getting it all, no matter how many times I say it. Um, it's better than getting down and uh, 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 using your elbows, right? Yeah, it's, but it's still not going to get you the results. You got to do it all right, all right? And there's something that you're never going to do that creep because you don't understand it, All right? And again, I work with a lot of smart men who are successful. So it's not an intelligence thing, all right? Probably with your job that made you master that is you got a general understanding, probably the same way as fitness, but you kept on trying. You were determined to be the best and you were trial and error before you quit. Probably don't do that maybe with your marriage or your kids or whatever, too, but or your fitness, but you did it at your job. And that's the difference, right? So it's not your age, it's not your metabolism, it's not all these other factors. It's Again, everybody's different, but it's your understanding of it. And that's why I do this one-on-one -on -one coaching. I talk to men on the phone. I tell you, it's not necessarily the most efficient use of time when I could just sell you a website, just sell you some audios and videos. But I'll sell you the audios and videos, special access. I do that, right? Because people have this concept that that's how you learn. But I can tell you, I can this. I can tell you exactly what to do, <laughs> all right? And I can talk to Patrick and tell him exactly what to do because I have told him exactly what to do many times throughout this. I appreciate his persistence, right? But... 
And his situation is a lot of men's situation. But if you hear it and say, well, that doesn't apply to me. I already do that, right? Then that's why a lot of times for the men who are really committed to get to the other side, that's where I'm a teacher and a coach to that one person, not throwing out generic information and hope you understand. I'm listening back and forth, all right? You know, so like I said, I have a lot of smart men. When they keep saying, yeah, you know, I'm feeling strong. I'm energized. I feel good. You know, uh, people are coming up to me and complimenting me. All right, but 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 I'm not losing weight on scale. You know, I, I'll tell them for the hundredth time what I just said, what I said to them. Because if I don't, they may quit. They might not do the things that are working 100% because what's the use? No, they can't bring in factors that aren't important because that's their understanding. I can understand how it seemed like it would make sense, but that's just... Not how it works. If this is important to you, if it's not, if you're doing fine, man, I see guys who, uh, man, I think they look great. But when I ask them how they, uh, how would they rate their body on a scale from one to 10? You know, they'll say four, three. They're disgusted with it. You know, like I said, I see, I see everybody. I mean, I think that's a harsh grade. But it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what they think. And even if it's not really a three or a four, it's really a seven or eight, there's still a nine and 10 to get to no matter who you are, right? Usually when there is a way to get to the highest level, whatever number you put on it, okay? But you got to know what to do. And everybody's a little different from where they start and their understanding, All right? So reach out. I put my number there. If you're interested in one-on-one coaching, we could talk about it. And this is for the, you know, you're not... You're not okay with how there is a more efficient way of learning, not just watching more videos. Because uh, I, if you just watch every video, I heard that I do that. Well, like I said, it's the difference between, yeah, you're not standing up looking around when the pitchers, but you're not down and creeping and you're not doing it on every pitch. And it's important if you want to be outstanding, right? Hello, Michael. I hope that's helpful. <laughs> do you guys have any questions? Uh, what is my favorite body part to train? Um, and I guess chest. Chest, probably. Let's see here. Let's see here. Should we? Okay, I got that question. Hello from North Carolina. Just started following you. Okay, thank you. Let's see, get your questions here. I said, I'm 49 years old, whole body training weekly, three days training, less sets giving, giving me gains, sir. Work stress life, I'm overcome by workout. It's counseling, time watching. Awesome. Okay, Doug Smith, I, I got it here. Um, first time comment, I do... 15 out of 10 at work building homes, 7 out of 10 on my workouts, 15 out of, uh, out of 10 on a bad diet. You're helping me figure out diet discipline. Thank you. 50 years old, 340 talents at 6'4". Okay. Let me know how I can help you. Doug, reach out. Posted my number several times. You know, at 50 years old, 300, even though you're 6'4", you're right, big guy. 340 pounds. Um, you work this hard on your business, right? Building homes. And I know the stress and, and you got to deal with contractors and I mean, uh, employees, not always, uh, 
the easiest proof. A lot of stress managing home deadlines, prices. I mean, right? I can uh, see how you know becoming great at that just takes so much willpower, focus, energy, and time. It's not easy uh, to uh, you know uh, put the right amount of attention on your workouts, right? I understand that, but uh, you know, what are your reasons why you get, get in shape? How's your health? I mean, you know, if you're building homes, there's probably a lot of stress with that. How have you held up? All right. Probably, you know, if you're in great health, you probably don't have as much desire to, uh, you know, lose the uh, body fat. I hope you're still on. Let me know if you're still on. Uh, let me still see if you're, you're still online, Doug. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, you are. Uh, bad knees and a hip. You know, diet, 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 diet. Zero prescriptions, awesome. That's awesome that you're on zero prescriptions. Uh, a lot of times, though, it's when you're getting by with the extra weight. What's the sense of urgency uh, to lose it? Especially, you know, 50 years old. I mean, we feel young, right? I mean, I'm 60, by the way, you know, but... 50, I guess that number you start thinking, well, I'm older. I never thought I'd be 50, but you, you, you feel young, still contributing, you know, to society and everything like that. But uh, so it's a good thing that you're not on any prescriptions. Uh, but sometimes uh, not saying, you know, it's create that sense of urgency while you're on zero prescriptions. So you never have to have prescriptions. Uh, how much weight do you think you need to lose? I'm just curious, um, Doug. And then what do you think your plan is? What do you what do you know you need to do to make that happen? Yeah, older men like late forties to get rid of the visceral fat around the belly. Well, you know, in addition to your diet, you know, um, what uh, the studies are saying is intense cardio helps uh, with that. Right. It's catching up with you. Uh, Got to get it under control. Reach out. Reach out, Doug. We'll talk. Need to get to 275. Yeah, so what is that? What did you say? You're at 300 and... Good, Jorge. Thank you for being here. Whole year, should I go for visible abs? What exactly do you mean by that? Whole year, should I go for visible abs? Antonio was was uh, was that helpful? Did you, have you heard that too? And you know, I'm I'm curious. Um, do you have a lot of visceral fat? How would you know? I mean, I know how you find out, but what makes you think it's visceral fat that you have? Uh, are you just assuming that, or just in case you have it? But how do you know the fat that you have is visceral fat? I'm curious. Guys, click that link in, uh, that's connected to this video. I have a, a special offer. If you want to spend one-on-one -on -one time with me, I have a, like a special introductory price. Right? Also, if you are new here and you're not on my, my mailing list, let me give you that link. Right? So that uh, you can stay up to date.
we go. So we'll click that link. Good, good Doug. Message me. Yeah. You know, the key to this is not go on some very restrictive uh, diet that takes you, you know, there's a price to pay, right, to have the body that you want. Um, but you don't want to pay too high a price. You want to pay a price that's the right price so you can pay it for the rest of your life and not, you know, go overboard with your training, your eating, uh, being too calorie restrictive, uh, eliminating uh, the food you like enjoy too much doing excess exercise that you're willing to do now because you won't be able to keep that up. You may you know, lose the weight, but it's not sustainable. You need to learn how to do it in a sustainable manner. So um, my visceral fat is high and I'm natural. So whenever I drop my carbs, my muscles <laughs> look shrinks. Okay, it has nothing to do with visceral fat and it has nothing to do with you being natural. You may, you may or may not be right unless you get a scan. You really have no idea how much visceral fat you have. You have no idea if it's high, low, or somewhere in between because you probably don't have a reading of how much visceral fat or the education to know if it's high, low, or somewhere in between. That's just a guess about visceral fat. And it also has nothing to do with... Uh, your muscle look shrinks, okay? Being natural has nothing to do with it either, all right? When you drop your carbs, there's, you know, number one, when you drop your carbs, you're really reducing your calories. And if you don't know how many calories that you're eating, you can be eating like 1,100 calories. Because if we're gonna, um, or if we're gonna eat up, if we're gonna eat more food, it's probably gonna be in carbs. It's not gonna be in fat necessarily when watching what we're doing. And meat, protein, it, it's tough to overeat get too many calories from that, right? So the carbs, uh, when you cut those out, you know, you could be eating as little as 1,100 calories, 1,200 calories. So even if you're eating the right foods and you think the best thing to do is avoid carbs, the, the truth of the matter is you're eating uh, so few calories, all right? Your muscles, all right? Your muscles are 35% of your body and 70% of it is fluid. When you're in a, uh, cal such a severe calorie deficit, uh, your muscles and, and, and carbs, there's no glycogen in the muscles. You know, creatine draws the good fluid into the muscles. That's what, when you eat up, even when you're not in some surplus getting fat, um, you know, there, there's good, healthy fluid in the muscles and you're maximizing it 70%. It's like your, your muscles with that good full look, right? They're, they're like your muscles are like plump grapes, Right, not fat grapes. Again, the muscles are thirty-five percent of the body and seventy percent fluid, and they, you know, they uh, either maximize with good fluid or they're minimized. They're either uh, plump, juicy grapes or they're depleted raisins. So when you eat too few calories and you avoid carbs, you know your muscles uh, they flatten. You know they look more like raisins. You'll lose weight on the scale. You'll lose strength. But uh, that's why your muscle, uh, your muscles, uh, they don't, uh, they look like they shrink. But I'll, I'll even tell you this. If you were to said, if you were to take a picture for, you know, 10 of your friends while you were at a low carb uh, diet and your muscle to you shrinks, it doesn't feel the same. You don't feel that pump. It's a feeling. But visually, they say, well, you look like your muscles have shrunk. Oh, man, you need to get in some carbs or creatine to do that fullness. Even if you did, they still can't see the difference. That's something in our own heads a lot of times. And, uh, um, yeah. So, you know, you can follow Mike Mentzer's diet protocol. There's no magic in food. There's no magic in the combination of foods. But, obviously... Your understanding of how it works. You may think that you're filing, you know, Mike Mincer, Joe Blow, whoever, right? There's certain organizing principles that make any diet work. All right. And if you don't understand how, like some of the things that I've said here, you'll just go from diet to diet to diet and not how to make any of them work, or you can make them all work. All right. Every diet 
Let me just tell you. Okay. So I'm on the Mike Mincer diet, right? There's someone like Mike, Mike Mincer, maybe the way he trained, the way he talked or whatever. And, uh, you know, I see that text, Doug, that just came through. Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you a quick call. I, I don't know if you're on the East coast. Uh, but I'll give you a quick call. Um, when I, when I log off here, maybe we can set up some time tomorrow. So look at your schedule right now. Um, see what, uh, maybe some time to spend on the phone tomorrow. All right. So, so there's something about a diet that it makes sense to you, your understanding of it. Yeah. Doug Smith. I got you. Got you. See, I'm looking at your text come through Doug. All right. So I got you. All right. So, so we have Mike Mincer. You might like the way he trains. Uh, maybe he's really popular. Someone thinks highly of him. So if he gives you a diet, you're already three quarters of the way there and believing it, but it has nothing to do with the diet. All right. If you believe carbs are evil and you're carbophobic, right? And you carb sensitive, right? So a diet like keto it's already has you three quarters of the way sold that it's going to work. If you really believe the quality of the food uh, is what's most important, that helps you build muscle and lose body fat, which isn't true. But if you believe that and you have the whole food diet, where it's all whole foods, you take out processed sugars or whatever it is. Well, they already have you three quarters sold and committed. You're more likely to comply and follow through with a 15 out of 10 effort. Right? There's something that already meets you where you are. It's pacing and leading. It already comes into your world, what you already believe. And so you're going to pay more attention. Right? Um, you know, it could be uh, intermittent fasting. Oh, you mean, man, when I was a bodybuilder, I read those bodybuilding magazines that said that I'd eat six times a day. Man, I've got a serious job. I can't eat six times a day. Oh, you mean I can only eat a couple times a day with a big, gigantic gap? That's perfect for me. So it fits your lifestyle. You want to believe it's true. So that diet has your attention. So every diet has some feature that kind of meets your belief system right away. It isn't something radically different than what you think. And there's so many to choose from. You will find one that makes sense to you. Even if you really don't know how to diet, you didn't put that much research into it. They all work, all right? So, but that one will have you for that reason. They usually have a second element and some, what I you know, call science to it. Oh, ketosis. Oh, that's the key to all this. Or, you know, hormone levels or whole foods and processed sugar, what it does to you. There's some science element to it that has convinced you. Right. I'm not saying that that science isn't true, but a lot of times it's impact. It may be true, but it's not why you're at 25% body fat. <laughs> it may help this much and it may be true. But if it, if, if that diet has something you kind of already believe and you buy into the science, it, hey, whoa, that science sounds solid. All right. So now you have a better chance to make that diet work. All right, because you already believe. And if you believe you're going to give better effort, if you give better effort, you're going to be persistent. You're going to make the sacrifice. You're going to put that 15 out of 10 effort and it's going to work for you. All right. So when it comes to the diet, you can't eat too many, too many calories a day. Everybody knows that, right? But how many even know how many calories you eat? What's a little? What's a lot? You don't know how many calories. You know, and I've, I've talked to hundreds of men. I would say five out of 10, uh, will tell me they know how many calories they're eating. <laughs> and two and a half of them are BSing me. They just think it's a good number, so they think, oh, 2,000 is good, right? You gotta know how many calories you're eating. You, know, you gotta know what a little and a lot is and, and all that, right? But it's pretty obvious you can't eat too many calories. You know what the thing is too is? I mean, to have it sustainable, you can't eat too few calories. That'll give you a short-term uh, results. But then you'll be boxed in, the progress will slow down, the compliments will slow down. You know, if you're eating too little food, you're going to be tired and cranky and not as strong in the gym. And you're going to quit because it wasn't a sustainable way to do all this. Even though you got the results, the method was not sustainable because you ate too few calories. But the point is, moot. what's too few, what's too little when you don't even take the time to know how many calories you eat. And trust me, I know 
there are experts out there don't count calories. That's dumb. And I, I, I understand that. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. When you find that about it, consistency will make it work. And the fourth element that'll make a diet work is that you know what to expect and when. You know, here's a typical thing, like for a really overweight person, they'll go on a diet, let's just say keto, they'll lose 10 pounds the first month and they're happy with that. Oh, but the second month, they only lose five pounds, right? And they'll think, wow, this isn't working anymore. And then the third, third month, they lose three pounds. So they lost 18 pounds in three months, but... They they don't know what to expect. They think it's not working anymore. And it's not worth it because they, they don't have the expectation, right? So if, if you don't eat too much, you don't eat too little, you find that right amount or consistent and you know what to expect from your body and when it's an unrealistic expectations because you don't know. Any diet will work, all right? But just some have some element that meets you what your believability, maybe you're influenced by the person or whatever, all right? It makes sense to you. You don't have to fight with, I don't really believe this, but I'm going to do it every single day. It usually doesn't happen. And the science element, whether it's making this much of an impact, it, it, it helps persuade you to give that effort. There's certain things, you know, like I said, you know, uh, you know, you know, genetics, right? You know, all these things I said here, let me just tell you, I talked to very smart men, successful men. You know what? They don't understand what I just gave you freely. They don't understand it. They don't believe it enough and they don't follow through and they don't follow through enough. All right. So whatever your genetics are, if you don't know how to do this, genetics aren't even the problem. Genetics are an excuse, right? Because no matter what your genetics are, what are you? It does, you're never going to live in that that person's body who has better genetics. You're never going to live in there, right? <laughs> you probably don't want it. You don't want his genetics for his looks. Maybe you're more handsome, right? Right. So you don't live his life with his unattractive face. You get to have yours, all right. So you have your genetics, whether you think it's good, bad, or whatever. It could be better. It could be worse than the other person. You know, you still need to know what you're doing to get the most out of your genetics. Is it that simple? Consistency is the key. No, I mean, you got to know what to do. You can't consistently, and again, I use that analogy about, you know, that softball being down, right? Bracing with your knees, being down, and take that hop. I mean, it looks the same. It's massively different. It's massively, massively different even though it looks the same. So if you're down and you're doing better than most and you look better than most and you're down in that softball position, you're resting on your knees to the, to the, where you want to go, we're looking at you and saying, wow, why, that guy's just half doing it, right? Man, someone should teach him how to do it right because he's putting that effort, just doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know he even kind of looks a little lazy leaning on his knees, right? So if you consistently do that, you're not going to get the results. Good job. <laughs> you know what? Hey, that reminds me. How many of you have, uh, have a, a wife who needs to take her fitness to the next level, even though she probably looks great right now? How many of you have a wife or a girlfriend that, you know, uh, probably can't re relate to me in workouts for older men, all right? Anyway, let me um, direct you to my wife's page. So go over there and uh, I'm going to give you her page, so go over and like it. Hmm. It's a Carrie LaCour, Carrie LaCour Fitness, I bet. Yeah. Hmm. So, 
So we'll go there. All right. All right, so let's see. So um, Toe says, uh, but there's also another group of people uh, that know what to do but aren't consistent. And like you said, you, you can't be consistent if you don't do it right because your body will only be able to suffer for a certain amount of time. Okay, yeah, that's when you do it aggressively, uh, too aggressively. It's not sustainable mentally, physically, emotionally, right, with your lifestyle. But, you know, I, I really believe, this is what I believe, if someone had absolute certainty that what they do is going to pay off, all right, they'll do it. It isn't like they know what to do and they get results. They don't, they're not certain enough, all right? Like, for men here, you know, and, and again, a lot of the men who watch me, they're not commenting Right, they kick, they're kicking butt in business. I'm sure Doug just why what I see is probably is a great builder. Probably built a great career at 50 doing that, right? But the truth, Doug, is you didn't have absolute certainty that it was all going to work out. That you're going to get through the rough spots to be successful, right? And I always say, you know, you got to be like 95% certain. You're never going to be 100% certain. Then what would be the I mean, after you accomplish it, you can say, oh, yeah, I was certain it would work out. You know, you could say that, right? But the truth is, you know, it's built in the system to be on edge. Keep you know, There's no guarantee that it's going to work out, right? That's part of the fun and part of the pain too, right? And, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and, uh, a lot of men, they're not certain enough. They don't know what to do or they would do it. You know, and or, or I think they would follow through. Let's see here. Keep one foot in front of the other. That's right. Get some help. Get some help. Then you're not challenged. You're not, you know, I use the analogy back when I was 16 years old. You know, I didn't have a dad uh, to help me read maps. Like I would remember if you're older like me, you know, those little Thompson maps. I couldn't even fold them or unfold them, and I knew I couldn't fold it back, so I never even opened it. But I could, even if I did open, I couldn't read them. Like, you know, I remember where I grew up. It was in Sacramento, California. It was flat. You know, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, so I can go look at hills to know where east, west is, right? But Sacramento, it's just flat. How do I know where north is in a map? There's no, is there a north star somewhere? So those maps were absolutely useless to me. I would get lost everywhere I went, you know, from 16 to, I don't know how old, right? You know, I spent half my time on freeways, sweating, clutching the wheel, not looking at the great weather, certainly not listening to what it's saying, leaning up. Am I going the right way? Angst, uncertainty, you know, the whole time, <laughs> you know, even a lot of times I was going the right way. But it doesn't matter. I was just so filled with angst. I felt like turning around all the time. Right? Sometimes it was a good thing I turned around. I couldn't be consistent. Just be consistent. Just have faith. One foot in front of the other. I was going the wrong way. <laughs> right? A lot of times it was a good thing that I did turn around. All right? But what I remember most is what a terrible experience being so uncertain was. I better really want to get to that other side to withdraw all that angst. And again, we didn't have phones to just turn us around. Hey, turn around, stupid. Make a U-turn here in 500 feet. Wouldn't that have been nice? It to just sit and suffer. <laughs> That's you, Patrick, Patrick, too. That's a lot of men, right? But here's the thing about it. How many places did I not go? Right? Just from the inception, hey, do you want to go to this party? Do you want to go see the San Francisco Giants game? How many options did, right from the beginning, that I didn't, I eliminated? You know why? Because in the back of my mind, I knew it would be a horrible experience filled with angst on the freeway. Should I turn around, sweating in my clothes? 
So many guys aren't even going on this journey because you know the journey is going to be filled with angst. You know the whole time you're not going to know, is this the right amount of calories? Was it my workout? Is it what this, that? Well, I heard this and I heard this. You're not even, you're not putting a 15 out of 10 effort in whatever you do because you're just filled with too much angst. I get it. You know? Right? <laughs> right? But, you know, if you're filled with too much uncertainty, you're not going to follow through with what you're doing. Right? Now, are you, Doug, are you talking figuratively? You know where north is, that you're going the right way? That's what I mean. Like the directions are going to, that you're on are going to take you where you want to go. Or you always knew literally what a map was. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Oh, we can talk about that later, right? You know. But no, I, hey, my inability to read maps, that was on me. I figured that I had that uh, lack of, you know, now I'm not saying everybody else did, <laughs> right? That's why I'm saying it. But for those of you who can relate, that's how men's journey are. And I don't care how smart they are. They want to get fit. They need to get fit. They've been carrying the extra weight. Uh, they're three quarters of the way doing it right. They're just filled with so much um, um, uncertainty that they're doing it right. And that's where my one-on-one -on -one coach will take you through a journey. Man, after, I don't know, 12 weeks, you'll have it for the rest of your life. So if you're 50 years old and you've been kind of battling this and not knowing what to do, so you're not putting your effort in there, you get halfway and you go back, or you go on yo-yo diets, or you hear so much thing, and man, just 12 weeks? No, no, yeah, like I said, I, I'm knocking me about maps. But again, that's just an analogy of a men's journey through fitness. You know, uh, it just feels they're uncertain with their fitness. Like I was uncertain with maps. So I still wanted to do it. I still went on that road. But I'm not thinking, you know, about, you know, how great the game is going to be, who I'm going to enjoy with. Sometimes I probably didn't even get on the journey because I knew I would get lost. And so my point is, that's how it is with fitness. You're not even thinking about how lean and mean and how great it would feel once I master this, I work through the challenge. And so in addition to my amazing home business, I mean, my building houses, this business that I you know, pound of flesh and stress, I know they don't just give away money, right, Doug? They don't even give away that, right? You earn, you earn it regardless of what your friends who think you're successful, man, it's done and paid for. They have no idea what it took you to get there, right? All right. Um, so you have that, you know, probably have a great family and everything too. I mean, you know, who knows? It's like, what does it take to be the total package and have that fitness too, right? It, it's tough to figure it all out, figure it out at the same time. Very few people do. Very few people do. Hey, Rob. I see Rob is calling me, former coaching client. I, I wonder if you're watching this live video. I, I will call you back. Right after I call <laughs> Doug back. I'll leave my DNA on every job site. Hey, tell me, did you get value out of this? To me, I mean, I love talking about this. I love helping you. I don't know how long uh, that I've been on this line. Feels like five minutes, but I'm sure. I want to know that it's helpful to you, that you got something out of this. Talked all about uh, following uh, directions. We talked about softball. We talked about eating. We talked about genetics. We talked about a lot of things. I hope that you found that, that helpful. I'm going to put my number up here one more time. If you want to shorten this process. The type of man who knows what he wants, he gets what he wants. Nice. All right. So that's going to do it for this workout for older men live. Thank you so much for joining me. Leave a comment. Tell me what you found most valuable about our time together. I want to do more of that for you. All right. Have a great night.